Welcome to episode 38 of Sharing Life Lessons. This is season 4. We are one spirit, one heart, and together we are creating a library of stories. I am your host Hamida and I want to bring you stories because stories inspire, stories teach, and stories heal. Listeners, to begin with, let me ask you something. How many of you feel that speaking up at work is a challenge? It is not that you don't have opinions. You certainly do. It is not that you don't have ideas or the smarts. You certainly do. But you still have an incredibly hard time expressing yourself. If your answer to any of the above questions is yes, then you are not alone. Let's talk about this with our guest for today. Her work focuses on helping women in the corporate world build confidence and find their voice at work. Everyone, let's welcome Jessica Guzik. Hey, Jessica. Thank you so much for being on Sharing Life Lessons. It's always, always nice to have another podcaster on because here we are, both of us, staring at each other on Zoom with our mics, with our headphones, with the right tools. So hopefully we have no excuses about the audio for this particular episode. So welcome again, and please tell us something about yourself. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to have this conversation. I love the idea of sharing lessons. I think they're so powerful and the way you list them out at the end, I just love. So thank you. My name is Jess and I have a podcast. It's called The Art of Speaking Up and it's actually very closely tied to what I do. So I'm an executive in the corporate space and my podcast is all about being a woman in the corporate space and it's all about finding confidence and finding your voice because that is something that I really struggled with professionally and I'm sure we're gonna get more into the fears around finding your voice and having a voice out in the world, but that is what I do. That's great and I have heard your podcasts You have a variety of topics on how to build that confidence at work. And I know that you are gearing this to women. And as much as that's where your focus is, I really think that anyone could benefit from what you have in your podcasts. So listeners, the link to Jessica's podcast is in the show notes. And now over to the interesting part. Jessica, please tell us your story. My story. Okay. So it started when I started my career and I was so excited to come out into the working world as a professional woman. I remember having this vision of what it meant to be this confident professional woman. I had this fantasy of being the powerful woman in the meeting room and giving a powerful presentation and just feeling this sense of empowerment and It was a naive fantasy at the time because when I started my career, I had the very polar opposite experience and I went out into the professional nine to five world and I found myself very insecure about my capabilities, very, very shy, struggling to find my voice in meetings. And it took me a couple years to really figure out how do I feel confident and how do I bring all the strengths and all the talents that I know I have, how do I bring them out at work? Because I felt like I was shutting down as soon as I was in a work environment and something about it just made me feel so not confident. And my story was really then in getting to a point a few years later where I was turning 30 and reflecting back on those early years where I really wasn't feeling confident at all and where I really was struggling. And I realized around that time that I wanted to talk to other women who may have experienced that confidence and that self-esteem struggle that I was experiencing because I remember when I was in it and feeling so bad about myself and I wasn't good at my job and I was so awkward, I felt so alone. And so around my 30th birthday, I started thinking, well, maybe my story could be a voice that makes other women feel less alone because the one thing that I really would have needed at that time was just to see a successful woman who had achieved success in her career saying like, look, this was hard for me too. I struggled with meetings. I struggled with my voice. I struggled with confidence, Mm -hmm. but I figured it out. And so that's when the idea came to me to maybe start a podcast 
but <laughs> I didn't start it right away. And we can talk about this more because I had a ton of fear around mm -hmm. the idea of recording my voice and sharing it with the world. So that's when I got the seed of the idea, but it actually took a couple of years before it, it became something. So Jess, tell us what was going on in those earlier years with you? Like, why is it that you think that when you were not at work, you were able to be your confident self, and that is what I'm hearing. But when you got to work and when you were in the work environment, you could not. Why did you lose your voice at work? I think the environment felt scary. And I think that as soon as I went into that new environment and felt scary, I had an inner narrative that I just believed was true that really wasn't true. So my narrative was like, oh, this feels scary. That must mean it is scary. That must mean that I need to make myself small and not be noticed. And whenever I felt uncomfortable, rather than looking at that as, oh, I'm uncomfortable because this is a new environment, but mm -hmm. I'm strong. I can get through it. I looked at it as, oh, oh, I'm uncomfortable. I'm really awkward. I don't belong here. And I kind of made those moments of discomfort mean something about me. And I fed into a cycle of, okay, I feel uncomfortable, so I'm going to shrink away and be quiet. And that kept my self-confidence really low. So it, it took some time to break out of that. And to the listeners, you've heard this time and time again in various episodes. Jess calls it the stories she was telling herself. Some in the past have called them limiting beliefs, which is what I call them as well. And so what Jess just told us is a beautiful example of how these stories that we tell ourselves or the limiting beliefs that we have play out in our life and get us to spiral downwards. Oh my gosh, yes. And it's so interesting because when we look back at it, we can look at it and label it as that fairly easily. But whenever you're in the experience of a limiting belief, it rarely presents itself to you as a limiting belief, at least for me, it simply feels like reality. It simply feels like I have this very frustrating, difficult circumstance in my life. This is annoying. Poor me. I am so stuck. Mm -hmm. And so it's always easier for me to see them in hindsight, but it does become really powerful then when you can start seeing them in the present moment. So Jess, can you give us some tips on how we can start, are there red flags or are there warning signs to tell you that this is your limiting belief? This is a story you're telling yourself. Yes. One of the big ones that I have identified are excuses and all of these very almost good sounding reasons for why you can't do the thing that you want to do or why it's hard. So I had what I thought were true circumstances that were limiting beliefs. So for example, I would keep quiet during meetings because, well, I'm the most junior person in the meeting. I'm the only female in this meeting. I'm the newest to the project in this meeting. And those all felt like really nice, good reasons to me. And so I think sometimes when you're justifying a behavior that feels very comfortable and that keeps you in your comfort zone, I think sometimes that's a red flag that those are actually just limiting beliefs, keeping you from doing something that's going to probably feel a little bit scary. That's a very good tip for anyone who is wondering if they are telling themselves story or they have limiting beliefs. So Jess, tell us about your podcast journey. Okay. So on my 30th birthday, I had a really good birthday and something about it's like a turn of a decade, right? Like 29 to 30, it felt like I was moving into an, an entirely new phase of life. And maybe it was just because you get extra reflective when you have a birthday like that. And it feels like you're entering into this new phase. And I remember at the end of the day, I was feeling very happy. It was a really fun day with my friends. And I was in an Uber ride home, just kind of like reflecting on how happy the day was and reflecting on, oh my gosh, I'm not in my twenties anymore. I, that's over. And I realized that one of the things that really defined my twenties was this career struggle and how alone I felt. And 
I had this sensation in that Uber ride. I'll never, ever forget. It was just like, I need to talk about this. It is time to talk about what happened. I've healed from it. I feel a lot better. I've moved on from some of the really difficult parts. And it was sort of like, okay, Jessica, now you share. Now you tell people about it. Now you talk about it. Now you use it to help other women. That's what I heard in that Uber ride. And I ignored it talking about limiting beliefs, I had a ton of limiting beliefs that sounded like, well, no one wants to hear from me and people are going to judge me and I can't do that. And I had the idea to share and talk about it via podcast. And I had a limiting belief. I'm not a podcaster. Mm -hmm. Podcasts are for other cooler people who are somehow better or more interesting than me. I can't start a podcast. So the limiting beliefs flooded in and what was fascinating, and this is like going to connect to one of my lessons, but I sort of dismissed that hunch and that instinct. And it just kept coming back every few months. It just would come back like, Jess, it's time to talk about it. Are you, are you ready to make this a part of your life? Are you ready to share vulnerably so that someone else who is having a difficult time knows that they're not alone and so that they can start to heal the parts that are difficult for them? And it wouldn't go away. It, so it turned from a nudge to a nag, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, because if it hadn't nagged, I think I would have ignored it. Mm -hmm. And I had this one day where I was battling with myself. I was having this inner battle of like, start a podcast, don't start a podcast, start a podcast, don't start a podcast. And I was like, okay, let me indulge my fears. My fears are that my voice doesn't sound good. People are gonna judge it. I sound awkward, I have nothing to say. So I was like, look, let me prove those fears. Let me just hit record on my phone. There's a voice memo app and let's see what happens. And it was so weird. It was like, I recorded that and then so many things melted away. I was like, whoa, all of these crazy big fears that I had in my head, none of them are real. It's just like pressing this button and talking. And of course I can do this. What am I so afraid of? And there still were fears, but I think that was the moment where the nag became stronger than the fear. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So how long did it take for you to get from the first nudge to your podcast? So from the first nudge to the first podcast was about a year and a half so which like is 18 months looking back you think you lost that precious time right yeah it's interesting sometimes I feel like we grow at the pace of what we're ready for and I also find that a really comforting thing to think of because you know sometimes you feel like oh I'm going too slow or I wasted time and those can be really painful thoughts that bring up so much regret but sometimes I just think that those things all had to happen because mm -hmm. I was so scared when the first nudge came that I needed that time, sort of like layers of a flower or an onion. I needed time for each layer to peel away until I could get to the layer of like, okay, I can press record on my phone. And then that layer was like close enough to the center layer that I could finally get there. And so even though it did take a long time, I think that's what I needed. And I think sometimes it's also it's nice to have time to grow and change. It's like a nice gift we can give ourselves of we don't have to be in a rush. That is a very positive way of looking at it. I am so glad you're looking at it that way. Well, I think whenever we're trying to go fast, I always question myself whenever I'm going fast. I just get curious and say, why am I in such a rush right now? And a lot of times there's something else behind it that's not about the timing. There's um, fear that it's not going to work out. There's something there that's driving you to try to control the experience. And sometimes when you are willing to let it take more time, you're releasing the reins and you're saying, I'm okay with not controlling the timeline because you have more faith that it's going to happen, that you don't need to squeeze it out right away. You understand that just like something growing organically, it's like you can't force a baby to become an adult any faster than it's going to happen. And so you're trusting that there's like this natural evolution to your own growth and your own personal journey. You're obviously going to show up for it and put in the effort, but you're also not going to get frustrated about the timeline or think that if it hasn't happened by a certain time, then you failed and it's never going to happen. 
I think that in itself is a life lesson. And so now that we've started talking about life lessons, Jess, tell us what were the life lessons that you learned throughout your journey as a young professional and then as a podcaster? I think one of them, and this goes back to slowness, is make space. In space and in slowness, you can really investigate what's going on and you can really look at the truth of what it is you're afraid of and what it is you want. Because I think a lot of the times when we feel frustrated, it's because what we want is in conflict with what we're afraid of. And when we can make space, we can identify both of those things And then instead of just feeling this frustration or overwhelm, we can say, okay, this is a solvable problem. I have something that I want. I have something that I'm afraid of. And I'm going to make the choice of whether it's worth it for me to face my fears or get past my fears so that I can move towards what I want. But that requires you to slow down and it requires you to make space. And so one of my first life lessons is make space to do that. And in that space, be really honest with yourself. No one's listening. No one's judging. You can write something and throw it out. No one ever has to see it, but it's only through the truth that you're actually going to see what is happening. And the truth is in you. If you give yourself the time to actually unpeel it and let it come out. Jess, what you just said about slowing down and about making space and almost trusting the process reminded me of a story that I heard a while ago about this little boy who found a cocoon in his backyard. And his mother explained to him that from this cocoon is going to come a butterfly one fine day. And he waited and waited for the caterpillar to turn into a butterfly. And it did not happen at his time. And so he thought to himself, gosh, the butterfly must be really struggling in there. Let me try and help the butterfly come out faster from the cocoon. And so he opens the cocoon up. And when he does that, he sees that the butterfly is there, but the wings have still not grown. And so this butterfly now will never, ever be able to fly if it was allowed to to get that space and time, then it would come out as a beautiful butterfly with colorful wings. Yeah, it's, you have to have trust in the process. And I think it's that period where the cocoon is still closed and then self doubt starts to come in and doubt is so powerful. And so to have the strength to stand in the doubt before you're out of the cocoon That is one of the hardest things I think that you can ever do and ever stick with. And so it it's difficult, but it's worth it. And it changes who you are and it changes the level of risks you're willing to take. It changes how uncomfortable you're willing to get. And once you go through a cycle like that once, but you can do it again. And then all of a sudden, Mm -hmm. like this whole universe of possibilities can open up to you. Self-doubt, that is something that most of us have every now and then. Talk to us a bit about self-doubt and how you try to overcome that. For me, it comes in like a rush, like a big tidal wave. It has a lot of force and almost like vigor to it. So whenever it comes, I always have to stop and let it wash over me because it is so strong that I can't deny that it's there and I can't pretend like I'm not feeling it. But I also don't want to act from it because it almost always tells me, stop what you're doing. This isn't working this is a bad idea, stay quiet, stay small. And so I have to just be willing to feel the discomfort of doubt without believing it and without acting. And again, it's like that space and slowing down. Once the wave is passed, then I can think, okay, do I believe what that voice said now that I'm not in the heightened intensity of it? Or do I want to label that as self-doubt? And I think one of the most amazing things is you can just decide that you want to choose that that is self-doubt because you know that if you believe it, it's going to keep you stuck in a place where you don't want to be. And so 
I think the interesting thing about like limiting beliefs and inner narratives is like, we get to choose what we label as a limiting belief Mm -hmm. and we get to choose like what new belief we want. And so it's in the aftermath of the self-doubt where I have the ability to choose and say, okay, what do I want to make that mean? I just had that horrible wave come over me. What do I want to make that mean? Mm, I like that. Recognize the self-doubt. Know that it's there. Let it wash over you, you're saying. And then see what other options you have and what you want to replace that self-doubt with. Yeah, exactly. Just let it come because I think Mm -hmm. once it's coming, it's coming. (laughs) It's on its way. And so you almost want to welcome it in, but don't listen to it. It's like welcoming a guest into your home and they're like telling you that your home is really ugly and you're like, okay, I'm going to be a really good host to you, but I'm not going to change my home because Mm -hmm. you don't like it. This is my home. (laughs) Nice, nice. Tell us more. Give us some more life lessons, Jess. Okay. I think one is that we have to learn the voice of our intuition. We have to learn how to identify that. For me, it's like a whisper. It's very quiet. It's very gentle, but we need to learn to identify the instinct within us that represents our truth because without that, we have nothing. And I think with my podcast, that really comes back to purpose and what am I passionate about? What gives me fulfillment? What gives me meaning? And I think that's a question a lot of people encounter in life. And to answer a question like that of what do I want to do? How can I feel more fulfilled? You have to learn to listen to this part deep down inside of you that channels fulfillment and joy. And it took me a really long time. I'm very analytical And it took me a really long time to just trust that I have this unexplainable feeling that I want to do this thing. I want to podcast. I want to write. I want to make art, whatever it is. I just have to trust the voice that leads me to those things. Even if I don't totally understand why, even if it doesn't totally make sense, I need to learn what that feeling feels like. And I need to practice listening to it and showing myself that usually when it tells me to do something, it works out really well. Yeah. And just to add to that, I resonated with it completely because it took me a while to really understand or be able to listen to my intuitions. It's there. It definitely is there. You're right. But also for those who are struggling with realizing that they have these intuitions and they have these inner voices, if you feel like you can't hear them, another way is to just open up a book hold a pen against the book and, and free flow right. Because when you do that, also your intuitions take over and you'll be surprised at what you've written. Yes. It's so fascinating because I think that intuition comes from the body and part of it comes from like a place in the body. And when you're writing, you're getting out of your mind and you're using your body, like you're physically using your hand to hold a pen and write. And I think something about that helps you connect. So I love that so much. Another way that I found helpful to get unstuck is to experiment playfully. Mm-hmm. So I, when I think about experimenting, I think about like, I don't know if you've ever been to those all you can eat buffets in Las Vegas, where there's every kind of cuisine you could ever imagine. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so yummy. But I remember whenever I go to those, it's amazing. But I also do the first round where I start like sampling to get a feel for what I like so that when I can go back and use like the rest of my stomach space, I know exactly what I want to eat. So I don't want to like, fill up on the stuff that I don't like as much. And I think with learning to hear your intuition, sometimes it's about doing that in life. It's about sampling lots of things and paying attention to what you like, because I think that our intuition speaks to us through pleasure and through how we react to new and novel experiences. Because when you try something new, it's like the way that you react, I like this, I don't like this. That is one of the most basic forms of your intuition. Like, how do you know that you liked it? You just liked it, right? And mm-hmm. so that's a really good way to get that like, yes, no, red light, green light feeling, which you try it on smaller things. And then you can build up to that like big daunting question of like, how can I feel more fulfilled? What is my life's purpose? My last life lesson is to indulge your rebellious spirit. 
So I think that there's this part inside of us that's a little more daring, a little more risk-taking, a little bit more like wild and renegade. And I think that that part of us is really important. I think that's like our authentic side that sometimes gets conditioned out of us throughout our lives. And I think it's very important for me, I know, to find that part of myself and really give it room to express. And sometimes that looks like taking risks or doing something scary, but that is, I think, how you get more in touch with your truer authentic self and you build so much confidence through that process because you are allowing that daring side of you to express itself Mm -hmm. and you're being more authentic and you're like taking these scary risks and leaps in your life. And there's, there are a few things that feel more empowering. So that's my final life lesson. Oh, Jess, that is such a good life lesson because you actually took me back to my father and may he rest in peace. But that is exactly what he used to keep telling me. You need to take some risks in life. You need to get that part of your self out because everyone has it. And you have to take calculated risks without which you're not going to go far. Yeah, it's so true. And it will never feel totally comfortable to take a risk. That is the definition. And so you just have to get out of the waiting game. And there just will always be a moment, no matter what it is you're trying to do in life, there's just always going to be a moment where your body thinks you're jumping off a ledge Mm. and you're not, (laughs) but your brain thinks that you are and you have to do it. And it's never going to be easy, but it's like, who wants easy, right? Like we don't really want life to be easy because that's so boring. It's so much more exciting to just be bold. Yes, yes. Jess, this was a wonderful discussion. You gave us so much to think about. I want to ask you one last thing. Tell me after you started your podcast and you had all of these listeners, especially the young women professionals who is your audience, is there anything you have to report? Tell us about your fulfillment or about any feedback that you got from them, which made you feel glad that you finally listened to your inner voice and did the podcast. Yeah, that's such a good question. So many women have said, thank you for just sharing true stories, real stories, unfiltered stories, because I feel so much less alone in what I'm experiencing. And that's literally the exact thing that my intuition told me was be vulnerable, share your story so that other people can get that lift that they need when they're struggling. So that's been really satisfying to hear. And it's also made me see all of our connectedness because we're all scared of what people will think of us. And we all have fears around how we're going to be perceived. And when you see just how many people experience that. Like when you have a podcast, you can see how many people are listening and you're like, wow, this is a topic that people are struggling with. It just makes you feel more connected and it makes you feel like we're all vulnerable. We all get scared. We all go through difficult things. And we all also have the potential within us to choose to emerge from those things really, really strong. And I just find that so inspirational. And that's kind of like what keeps me going and keeps me doing the show. You're right. We are all connected and I'm so happy to be connected to you. Thank you, Jess. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. Wow, that was such an informative discussion. Listeners, I hope you got a lot out of it. I know I did. And here are my key takeaways. One, make space, slow down, be honest with yourself. That will enable you to figure out what you really want. Two, We are the ones who choose our limiting beliefs, but once we recognize and accept them, then again, we get to choose what we want to replace them with. Three, learn to identify the voice of your intuition because it is there, and without that, we have nothing. Four, indulge your rebellious and risk-taking side to get in touch with your true, authentic self. And lastly, the big one, the truth is in you. Finally, when you feel engulfed in fear, you have only two choices. 
you either let fear take over you and you run up as fast as you can from what you need to achieve at that time, or you face fear head on and see where that leads you. The choice is yours. That brings us to the end of this episode. I will bring you another episode of Sharing Life Lessons next Wednesday. Until then, be happy, be safe, and be well.